OK, let's head over to Chef Mark, who is making a classic winter warm-up. We've got a chowder. I love a good chowder, Mark. Yeah, that's it. And it's a really popular dish, chowder. It's perfect for winter, mm. like you said. Really creamy and rich. And we've got some great ingredients in here. What so, have we got? So we're going to do a little bit different today. We're going to do a salmon chowder. Okay. You know, you can change it for clams. Um, you know, you can take the seafood out and you can even put chicken in if you wanted. You okay. know? But we're going to do salmon today. We've got corn as well. That's coming to the end of the season. So we can get, you know, last couple of recipes in with that. Nice fennel, dill, potatoes in there. And uh, you can put fish stock in, but I've put a little bit of chicken stock in just to make it not too fishy as well. Nice. Mm, brilliant. I great. can't wait to get stuck into making this. It's great to have you with us. We are in the Beko kitchen for a hearty salmon chowder recipe from Mark. I love a good chowder. So, Mark, what is the most important thing to remember when making a chowder? Um, so you want lots of texture in there, so we've yep. got lots of ingredients. So texture is good, but you want the sauce, so mm -hmm. it's going to be thickened with a roux. It's a white sauce, it's loosened out um, to make a soup, but we don't want any lumps in that. Okay, okay? Great. so texture's good, but not in the... Uh, Base of the soup. Okay. 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 So that's kind of the difference, isn't it, between soup and a chowder? It's that roux, it's that thick sauce. Yeah, yeah. Really so, it's, so a chowder, yeah. I mean, chowder is a soup, but then that's how we're going to thicken it. Nice. So, so we've got stocks in there. So we're saying we're using chicken stock today, but we can use um, uh, fish stock if you want. Uh, it's entirely up to you. And we've got milk, and you can even put cream in as well. Beautiful. Well, basically, that is going to be thickened by flour and butter, and that is a roux. Nice. Okay, cool. Right. So we're starting off with a bit of alpha one oil in the pan, yeah. and we're going to cook up some celery. Bit of oil, medium heat, some celery. In there. Yep. Okay, and we just want to soften all these vegetables, and we sort of just um, you want to cook, cook them, you know, roughly the same size. So when you're eating the soup, you know, you're not getting any big chunks of um, bits of bobs in there, and it all cooks at the same sort of time. So you could use a normal onion if you want. It's quite nice to do a spring onion as well. Just gives it a bit of a different flavour. Nice. Celery's in there. Um, fennel. So fennel's great, especially with seafood. Really sort of um, aniseedy flavour. Okay, this is good to watch how you prepare your fennel. Yeah, so I mean, there's you know, there's a few different ways. So you've got a little root there, so just take the root off. That's fine, and okay. then you can just you know, you can just dice it up like that. Use Ooh. the tips as well. It smells so good, and, uh, doesn't it? That fennel. Yeah, it's really good. It's really refreshing. Uh, yeah, works beautifully with uh, seafood as well. And um, a little tip for you at home, you know, yeah. if you've got dill in recipes and you can't find any dill, but you've got some fennel. Just, uh, just chop this up and put that in there. Okay, it's very, uh, you okay, know, you've got sweet. that sort of so those... beautiful flavour and sort of oh. aniseedy flavour there, and, and mm. you know, it's brilliant. So just substitute that as dill. Okay, cool. So, oh, is there some geez, dill? that tastes so good. There's some dill. Even looks the same, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. So, yeah what, there's not much difference, is there? <laughs> no, but then do, do the do the taste. You know. Okay, cool. Slightly different, but um, you know, a really good substitute. Right, so a little I'm bit. I'm eating the dill now. Yeah, don't eat it all. We need it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, different taste. But yeah, yeah. Yum. So, um, garlic goes in there as well. A little bit of salt and pepper. Um, I've got some thyme as well. You can use fresh. If you haven't got fresh, um, use some um, dried. That's okay. fine. You know, you've got it in there. And uh, we just want to cook that down. So, okay. give it a good season now. Yep. You give it a stir. And we're just sweat, sweating that over at a medium heat, okay? So, no colour. We just want to bring the flavours out of the vegetables. Soften them. Get them nice and soft. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's cool. it. Awesome work. And then... So if you give it a little bit of a season, now we're going to start making, building the roux, okay? So it's good to soften your vegetables. You don't need to cook them that long because we are going to still cook the soup, so they will get soft. Okay. Um, now I'm going to pop some butter in there. Looks a bit excessive, but this is, this is the base of the sauce, okay? It's chowder. Yum. Exactly. So we're going to melt that down. It's going to coat all the vegetables. And important thing now is we don't want to burn the butter. Okay. okay so you just want it melting, and then we've got some flour. And we're going to stir the flour into the butter first. Yeah. And then the key thing then is slowly add the liquids. Right, slowly. Okay, and you want to be sort of mixing it in. You can do it with a spoon or even a whisk. Um, and then just sort of slowly incorporate it and thicken it and then uh, get it to the consistency you want. And then you're going to cook it out. You've got to cook the flour out as well, otherwise it's going to be like floury and pappy. Um, and it will thicken a little bit more, so you can just add more liquids after. So we'll show you that now. Can you put whatever vegetables you want on a chowder? Oh, yeah, you can do cool. anything you want. If, you, if you're going to eat it, yeah. you can go off piece okay, with the recipe. You know? Okay, great. If you, uh, you know, if you don't like seafood, put chicken in it. Okay, great. Or oh, chicken and bacon chowder, that would be nice, wouldn't oh, it? Yum. So, just going to put the, some flour in there. Yeah. All right, so you just stir that through. Okay. So, get it all mixed through before you start putting the liquids in that. And then it's going to turn it down, turn the heat down a little bit. And a good tip as well, if you heat your liquids, it's quite a good idea as well. Heat the liquids. Heat the liquids. It'll go in, but you need to be whisking now uh, really fast. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm just going to start pouring it in. I'm going to start with the milk. Mm -hmm. So keep stirring it, keep stirring okay. it. So a bit in, incorporate it. You can see it's getting thicker. Yep. A bit more in to loosen it out. Okay. Oh, this is so nerve-wracking. 
I oh, know, yeah. You've got the cameras on you now. Yeah, don't that's make it right. lumpy. <laughs> right. So I'm going to put a little bit of stock in for chefs. Looking over my shoulder, that doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've taught you well, though. Yeah, no, you have. So a little bit of stock in there as well. You don't need to put stock in if you don't want to. You know, you can just do it with pure milk. Okay. Just gives you a bit of an extra flavour. Well, I'm going to stop there with the liquid, and then we're going to bring it up to the boil. Okay. And then we're going to turn it down and simmer it. And you want to probably cook it for about 10, 15 minutes on a low heat, and just keep tasting it. You know, it's going to thicken up, and you don't want to taste any flour sort of residue. Um, as bright. it's cooking, I'm going to dice some potatoes. So same size as I've cooked, cut all the other vegetables. I'm going yep. to pop it in, and we're going to cook that as well. So because it's nice and small, that'll only take about sort of you know, five to ten minutes or so. And then once we're at that stage, we can finish it off with the salmon. Excellent work. Okay, well, we'll start dicing, we'll start cooking. We're back in the Beko kitchen, and this chowder is looking happy. Are you pleased with it, Mark? Yeah, look at that. I mean, it's so smooth, so you did an mm. excellent job thank there. Thank you, thank you, you. You can see the flour's thickened it. Mm. got a nice um, uh, texture and richness in there. You know, if it's too thick and you want it a little bit thinner, just put a splash of, uh, you know, milk in there. That's fine, or stock. Uh, potatoes are in there, so they've been cooking away, so they're nearly cooked. Nice. So all there is left to do now is just uh, finish it off. So I've got some salmon, mm -hmm. so I've just skinned it, just double check there's no bones in there, and just cut it into sort of, you know, nice chunky that pieces. So good. But just remember, put the salmon in towards the end, because okay. once the salmon's cooked, you don't want to keep cooking it, because it'll just break and all go into a big mess. So once the salmon's cooked, we are going to serve this. Um, some corn, so you can get some corn, just um, tip, run your knife around, and you'll take all the kernels off, and then that can just be chopped up and put in. You know, this is already softened, um, so basically all we're doing with this is just warming it back up. Oh, great. You know, you can use a, use a tin of corn if it's out of season, you know, whatever you want. It's just, mm. just really nice, nice pop of flavour and sweetness and texture in there with the corn. Okay, great. So and then I've got, our, I've got our dill and uh, I've actually put some of the fennel tops in as well, so I'm just going to roughly chop that and that goes in very, very last minute. So once the salmon's cooked, dill goes in and yep. then it is ready to serve. I mean, that is it. That's how simple it is. You know, give it a good taste, you know, some salt and pepper in there. Season. And, uh, and just be... Uh, just be really careful once the salmon's in, just be really careful when you're stirring it, because as the salmon cooks, it becomes really, really delicate. Okay, great you know, tip. I'm even going to put another tiny splash of milk in there. I'm going to chop my herbs, and that is ready to go. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, well, I've never made a chowder. I'm going to go home and try this a little later on. Thank you so much, Mark. Cannot wait to eat this towards the end of the show. And, of course, if you want the recipe, it's on our website, thecafe.co.nz. I tell you what, though, this chowder's looking fantastic. Mark, are you happy with it? Yeah, very happy. Mm. Great job, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> what are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> oh, to, tomorrow we've got a, a great staff meal, what we do in the kitchen, spaghetti bolognese. Yay, you can guarantee there won't be any peas in it because Mark doesn't like putting peas in anything. <laughs>